Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be looking at a much loved and much hated watercolour, Opera Rose. Opera Rose is a bright, vivid pink colour. It's extremely neon. This is due to the dye that is added to the pink. The pigment is PR122, which is magenta. They then add a fluorescent dye called rhodamine dye to the mix. This makes the paint extremely fugitive. It can fade in as little as 15 years. I have decided to compare some other alternatives to Opera Rose that are slightly more light fast, hopefully in attempts to try and find a good replacement for this colour. Now I'm not going to label these until the end, so you can try and guess what they are during the swatching. Now there will be no true replacement for that pink colour, as that pink colour does have that dye in it that makes it super neon. That is really hard to replicate without that dye. Now the colour of Opera Rose itself is not highly useful on its own, but when mixed with other colours it can make some really nice mixes. And I will show you a couple at the end of a orange and a purple that you can mix with this colour it does really make a really vibrant and vivid colour mix. The brand of Opera Rose that I have is from Winsor & Newton. It's not the best brand out there for Opera Rose. You can get much nicer ones. The ones that I would look at would be Sennelier and Holbein would be the first two that I would look at. They look really good from what I've seen from swatches. The colours that I have chosen for comparison to Opera Rose tend to be magenta based colours that are similar to the Opera Rose undertone without the rhodamine dye in it. My aim here is not to replicate the pink, but to replicate the pink in the mix of the colour mixes that Opera Rose would achieve. So I will swatch some out of different mixes with these colours to see if I can achieve a close result to the mixing of Opera Rose. Now just because this colour is not light fast doesn't mean that people still don't use it. If you are an illustrator and you don't care about the permanence of your colour, then you can go ahead and use this without much worry, as your image will be scanned in anyway. However, even those who do worry about the light fastness do still use it, as you can get some really lovely mixes from this colour. It all is all down to you on how you weigh things up and which you prefer and whether you really mind. I'm not going to go into light fastness too much in a topic in general. If you do want to see more on light fastness, please let me know in the comments and I will make a separate video. If you do wish to pick up Opera Rose as a colour, or any of the colours I'm swatching in this video, I will leave a link down to them in the description bar. However, if you are waiting for me to reveal the colour names, don't look just yet, as it may spoil it for you. So this is your last chance now to guess what the colours are, and maybe guess which one is the genuine Opera Rose, as I'm about to write down the colour names in a moment.
Here they are all dried. So from left to right on the top row starting, we have Madder Lake from Van Gogh. This is the most different from Opera Rose from all the colors here. Next we have Quinacridone Rose from Daniel Smith. Then Magenta, which is my own handmade one. And then the fourth one along is the Genuine Opera Rose. And then the last one is Permanent Rose by Windsor, Windsor & Newton. The first one on the bottom row is actually Gouache from Windsor & Newton, Bengal Rose. I believe this may have Rhodamine dye in. Next along is Brilliant Pink from Old Holland. Then Royal Purple Lake, which is PV42 from Old Holland. Then Rhodonite Genuine from Daniel Smith. And then Magenta, which is PV42 from Schmincke at the end. So I'm going to show you some colour mixes now and show you how nice the Opera Rose can mix and how vivid the colour is. And that's the water after swatching all of the colours, a nice pink colour. So here is an orange from Opera Rose and you can see it's really, really bright and very, very orange. Now magenta does make nice purples in general and the Opera Rose one makes a very nice sort of vivid cartoony anime style purple. The other colours which I chose to make mixes from were Quinn Rose from Daniel Smith, Magenta which is my handmade one, Permanent Rose from Windsor and Newton, and Brilliant Pink from Old Holland. The Quinn Rose from Daniel Smith made a very nice violet, but its orange was definitely lacking. The magenta was a good middle ground and it made fairly nice purple and a fairly nice orange. Neither quite as bright and neon as the opera though. And strangely enough the permanent rose which is the same pigment as the quinacridone rose had something different going on. It made a nice orange but not such a nice violet which is really strange. The Old Holland Brilliant Pink is a red pigment, well two red pigments and a white pigment. So these made nice pastel mixes, but they were still pretty nice colours. Overall I don't think you can quite replicate Opera Rose, but you can have some good alternatives that are a lot more light fast. So what is your opinion on Opera Rose? Is it a must have for you or do you avoid it like the plague? Fugitive colours do play a part in watercolours and with the artists as well. It's down to personal choice whether it bothers you or not and which colours you choose. I hope you really enjoyed this and found it interesting. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Take care and bye bye.